Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex Torelli. Welcome back to an episode of the Hand of the Day. Hand of the Day. Excited to bring you this hand from a tournament from my boy Tom, who sends this hand in to me. Thank you, Tom. Shout out, what's up? Uh, interesting spot here. We're playing 2550 blinds, early stages of a tournament. So it's going to play a little bit more like a cash game. When you're deep stacked, there's no ICM at play. Going to play a little bit more like a cash game. Now, folds around to the button, who makes it 500 on 2550 blinds. Now, normally I would say that you're going to be one of you're going to want a three bet with a narrower range of hands. When your opponent makes a 10x open on the button, you're not going to be three betting the same range you would if he makes a 1.5 or, or, or whatever open on the button. But we still got Ace King. We still have one of the best hands we can have, and this is definitely still going to be in our three betting range. So he makes it 500. I would probably make it 1800, 2000. Cut down on his implied odds. I'd probably make a 4x three bet here. You're out of position. You're going to want to go a little bit bigger. I'd probably make it 2000. Again, I'm not going to be three betting that many hands because he made it so big. You're not getting a great price to do so, but Ace King definitely in that range. As played, our opponent opts to call, which I think is just a little bit too tight. It makes it tough to play this hand, and I think this hand just plays better when we have initiative. We opt to call, the big blind folds, we go heads up to the flop. Flop comes down queen jack five with two clubs. We check, our opponent bets 800 into 1.1 thousand, and we opt to check raise to 2,000. Now here's where I don't really get some of the logic in the hand. If we're gonna just play a defensive line pre-flop and opt to call, why don't we just continue calling on this flop? I don't really understand what our check raise accomplishes. If our opponent has a better hand, he's not gonna fold getting two or three to one on the flop. He's not gonna fold a jack, he's not gonna fold a flush draw, he's not gonna fold a straight draw, and even if he calls with a worse hand, what are we gonna do when we miss? Are we just gonna barrel away? If we are gonna barrel away, why don't we just three bet pre-flop and take initiative in the hand, C bet the flop and try and win the pot that way. So if I'm gonna play defense, I'm not gonna try and get fancy post flop, I'm just gonna check call this flop down, hope to have the best hand, hope to realize my equity, win at showdown or improve to the best hand. So I would check call the flop here given how I played it. If I'm going to check raise, I'm gonna definitely make it bigger. I wanna make a raise big enough that my opponent can fold. He's gonna have a tough decision if he has a queen or a jack or a straight draw. I don't wanna give him such a good price to call me in position and potentially outplay me post flop on a later street. I'm gonna probably make it 3,500 if I opt to check raise here. As played, we make it 2,000, our opponent calls, we go heads up to the turn. Turn comes absolute gin and offsuit 10. I guess if you know you're gonna hit it, might as well check raise the flop. So turn comes gin, we bet 3,500 into 5,000. Pretty straightforward. Here I'm gonna go for a pretty big size bet. It's a spot where if my opponent called the flop, he probably picked up more equity on the turn. If he has something like king queen, ace queen, king jack, a flush draw, straight draw, all those hands picked up more equity. So I'm gonna bet big here. I'm out of position. I wanna charge him if he's drawing. I wanna get value from my hand right away. 3,500 feels like a great size bet. Our opponent calls. We go heads up to the river where things get interesting. River comes an offsuit queen, and here we have a 2x pot size bet left where stack to pot ratio is two. Now in this spot, if we bet again, our range looks incredibly strong. This is not a card that most people bluff. So when we bet again here, our range looks pretty damn strong. If we were bluffing with something like, you know, ace four of clubs, we're probably not gonna have the courage to bluff this river just because it looks like our opponent's gonna call. So I would probably check this river and either let my opponent value bet a worse hand or let him bluff if he has something like a missed flush draw and he decides to turn a hand into a bluff. If I do bet, I'm probably gonna bet small, something like, 6,000 half pot, try and get value from an over pair or a queen. I don't mind checking here just because you don't really want to get raised. If you are beat, you can check call a bet. You can get value from missed draws. And again, it looks like we have a pretty strong hand, so I don't think our opponent's that likely to make a hero call. If he does have something like a hand that he's willing to put money in with, he's probably going to bet it himself. When you add that up, plus the fact that you get value from missed draws, I like a check overall. We decide to check, and now our opponent bets one-third the pot. He bets 4,600. My original plan here would be to check call. If I did bet and my opponent, if I did check and my opponent bet six, seven, eight thousand, I'm definitely going to check call here. I would never risk going broke in this spot, especially in a tournament with a straight in this spot. 
When my opponent bets 4,600 though, depending on my live read, I might feel like he's going for thin value with a queen. If I did feel like he had ace-king, queen-nine, or king-queen, or maybe even something like nine-eight or king-nine, then I would probably check raise here and go for value. I might make it 12 or 14,000 trying to get razor thin value from my hand. Again, a lot of this would just depend on my live read and the situation. I can't say what I would exactly do in this spot without any more information. Against a small bet size though, my intuition tells me that he probably doesn't have a boat. If he had a boat, he either would have three bet the flop with a lot of combos that make full houses, or if he has something like queen 10, I think he's just gonna bet a little bit bigger. So I would probably be inclined to go for a thin check raise here. I for sure would do that in a cash game, probably even still in a tournament. And go for something like 12,000, force my opponent to a really tough decision, and hopefully get paid by three queens. As played, we opt to check call, which is definitely a fine play, absolutely a profitable play. Our opponent turns over ace queen and we win a nice size pot. Hope you like this hand. Tom, thank you so much for sending it in. If you guys have hands you'd like me to review, please send them over to me at ConsciousPoker.com slash contact. I will pick the best ones and review them. If you want priority access to submitting your hands and having them reviewed by me, as well as potential to uh, have group coaching with me or your hands reviewed by a Conscious Poker coach, consider joining our pro membership program. You get access to me reviewing hands every single week where I go much more in depth than I have time to do in these videos, show you guys how to study like the pros, use poker programs like Poker Cruncher, solve these sorts of situations and really help take your game to the next level. Encourage you guys to check that out as well. You can do that at the link below. Thank you guys so much for your time. You guys are awesome. Stay tuned for more great content on Conscious Poker. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.